My name is Lindsay Hoggle, and um, I want to thank everybody. We, we had a planning session this um, winter, and one of the recommendations was to have a um, presentation on meaningful use, and so I volunteered to do that. I have um, had the pleasure of uh, representing a large 71,000 um, professional member organization on two high tech to the ONC for the past two years. So um, I pulled together this presentation for you um, on meaningful use. <clears throat> My experience basically comes from um, healthcare, and in the past 10 years, I've focused more on health information systems. Meaningful use legislation um, passed in February of 2009, and if you remember, that was about a month after um, President Obama. Um, was elected to office, so it had been in the works for a while. High tech stands for the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act. And um, <clears throat> here is the definition. Um, the easiest way for me to remember it is that this is legislation that um, is used to um, uh, incentivize providers and eligible hospitals to adopt uh, EHRs and use them in a, use them in a meaningful way. Um, in, in other words, they don't want them used for a, a you know, install a, a computer system and then have that pushed to the side and still use paper. Meaningful use um, definition basically um, puts a little bit more criteria around it in that providers and hospitals have to um, prove that they're using the EHRs in a meaningful fashion. Uh, capture the data in coded format, track clinical conditions, and um, report clinical quality measures and public health information. And I apologize, I have a cold, so um, you all, they don't need to use their hook. I'll run out of voice before then. Um, while I've been embed embedded in health, uh, the High Tech Act, I, um, to me it seemed an obvious thing for, that most people should know, but however, um, the Markle Foundation in January did a survey and found that um, actually the pub, both the public and physicians were not as familiar with high tech and the incentive legislation as they thought. Um, obviously, doctors more aware, but still, 36% um, not very or at all familiar with the high tech legislation. Um, Dr. Snyderman gave a great intro into some of the legislation that's driving this, and um, obviously it began with the um, Institute of Medicine's uh, uh, report back in 2000 to Ares Human that found that between 44 and 98,000 preventable medical errors occurred every year. From then, President Bush ordered an executive order in 2004 that said every American should have access to an electronic health record by the year 2014. Um, his executive order then launched a series of um, organizations, the Office of the National Coordinator that, and, and the Certification Commission for Health Information Technology to start that process, but the adoption rate still um, lingered. So in 2009, the High Tech Act was passed um, this, this year, um, we had uh, 2011 was the beginning of the stage one, and then in 2016, the penalties began. This shows you um, the fully functional EHR still is very low um, in 2009 and 10, and that's one reason why high tech was passed. High tech involves both the, um, the uh, carrot and the fork, as they call it. Um, the incentive is financial payments. Um, the penalty is that by uh, the year 2016, if you um, Medicare and Medicaid providers who have not adopted an EHR will receive a penalty, a financial penalty, um, on their reimbursements. <clears throat> Probably the most important thing about high tech is that um, they, the expectation is that we have interoperability within a system and across systems. Um, and that the data follows the patient. If I live in Washington, D.C. and move to California, my data should be able to follow me electronically. I should not have to go down and print it, have someone print it out and take it in, in paper. The High Tech Act, according to Dr. Blumenthal, who is the um, national coordinator for two years, is that his, his focus was that it really is a part of healthcare reform. 
not only are we bringing together a discussion and, and working on an infrastructure for the incentive program, but we're also trying to improve health care. Conceptual um, approach to being for use is divided into three stages and also three areas where we capture the data, we advance the clinical processes, and then we improve outcomes. And then that process re repeatedly occurs because we have it in electronic form. And then with the overall focus of it being improved outcomes. Obviously in five minutes, minutes I can't get through all of the um, programs and infrastructure of this $20 billion program. This is a list of some of those um, workforce pr training programs to provide um, health information technology professionals to support the implementations. Um, and the goals uh, you can see are driven, these goals are, are rippled throughout all of high tech. Um, and an important part of that is that this allows more of an engaged consumer patient approach. Um, so not only are we trying to use technology, but we also want to engage the patient. The learning health system, I, I see it as a, as a funnel. So we're bringing all of this together, the quality measures, standards, terminologies, technologies, and, and, um, interoperability into a funnel. And we've got to harmonize that and agree to a plan going forward for what we call a learning health system. Some people may call it a different funnel. There, as obviously there's a lot of controversy and, and, and you know, it, I don't think health information technology is the silver bullet or another funnel. Um, but I think probably Kathleen Sebelius put it best that um, at our present rate, if these numbers hold for people who are adopting electronic health records, this will be the fastest growing health technology we have ever seen in this country or any other country across around the globe. And I'm, I think the one reason why I give talks like this is I think the wonderful, exciting part of this is that it's brought all of us together to discuss at all levels how we improve healthcare. And so I will turn this over to Mike for the better part of my <laughs> presentation. And I'd like to thank Dr. Ross Martin for allowing me to share his um, rendition of high tech. 